My Line. Brought to you by new Bravo Floor Wax. Bravo, so tough you can wash it with detergents. And now let's all play What's My Line? From New York, let's meet our What's My Line panel. First, the star of motion pictures, stage and television, who will soon be seen with Anita Ekberg in the MGM film, The Alphabet Murders, Mr. Tony Randall. Thank you. As ever, it is a joy to introduce the queen of television, who has always seemed to me the perfect New York woman, Boston's own Arlene Francis. And now, one of the most entertaining conversationalists I have ever met, Miss Pamela Mason. I've got a very big word for him, but I can't pronounce it. Uh, everybody knows it anyway. Bennett Surf. <laughs> and here, as usual, is that paragon of pa panel moderators, the slightly pejorative and occasionally even flaccid moderator, Mr. John <laughs> Charles Daly. I don't mind that pejorative, but that flaccid bothers me. <laughs> Fat and slow or something like that, isn't that what it means? It's well, fun using that word, John, because almost everybody mispronounces it, calls it flaccid, but it's flaccid. I lost a dollar on it today. I thought I'd try it on you. Well, but there must be some reason why you knew it. You normally wouldn't, I'll guarantee. <laughs> Mrs. Mason, may I welcome you to our panel? <clears throat> Hope you enjoy yourself in the it, next half hour. You see why I wouldn't risk my word on him. Oh, I knew what he was coming up with. <laughs> He's rough, but at least it wasn't a pun tonight, so we're off on a very good start. <laughs> we'll have some very interesting occupations for Mrs. Mason, for Tony Randall, and uh, Arlene and Bennett. And uh, we'll also have a famous mystery guest before the panel but later in the show. But right now, I think it's time to meet our first contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Ralph J. Maglioni and guests, otherwise known as gang. Right, sir? <laughs> well, you've got the infield here. Where's the outfield? Huh? They'll be here. They'll, They'll be here. here. Good show. Uh, where are you from, sir? Akron, Ohio. Akron, Ohio. Nice to have you with us. Mr. Maglione, may I present the panel? Mm -hmm. And you've got some folks from Akron, Ohio to help you, sir. Come with me, if you will. And we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. Well, panel, we can tell you that Mr. Maglione and the gang are salaried and deal in a service, and let's begin things with Arlene Francis. Well, Mr. Maglione and group, are you, um, are you, do you have anything whatsoever to do in the performing world, either entertainment or sports? Can we answer this as a group, yeah? Yeah. I'd, yeah. I'd think so, yes. Well, I'm glad they all agree. <laughs> um, oh. Is it uh, more... Uh, a performing art rather than a sport. Yes. Well, I think we, well we're agreed on that. We could be here all night, <laughs> this, is good. this is what is wrong with rule by committee. You're getting a wonderful object <laughs> lesson. Is it more a performing art than a sport? I think on that term of comparison yes. we might yes. get... Can we get a yes out of that? Yes, yeah, you got a yes. And I quit now. You go ahead, Arlene. Um, when, you, uh, when you do this, does it uh, require a certain amount of dexterity? 
<laughs> they're dubious? I yes. think so. I know, they're yeah. Maglionis. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they think it does yeah. uh, a certain mm -hmm. amount of dexterity. Uh, do you wear something other than ordinary clothes when you're performing this service? Yeah. Uh, do you ever do anything off the ground? Mm -hmm. Are you in I the air so. at yes. any time in yes. your performing? Mm -hmm. Are you ever performers on uh, a high wire of any kind? That's a good <laughs> question. That's no. one down and nine to go. <laughs> <laughs> it's me. Uh, do uh, 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 people watch you? Yes, ma'am. Men and women? Yes. Closely? <laughs> well, we'd like to think that they're so good that everybody watches them closely. Uh, uh, is it all right for children to see you? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Is it something that you can do more than once? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> is it something that you do uh, several times in one day? No. No, I wouldn't do it several times in one day, I wouldn't think. Two down at eight to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Maglione, uh, the Ringling Circus is coming to town tomorrow night. Have you gentlemen got anything to do with the circus? No. No. That's uh, three down and seven to go, Mr. Randall. You perform in the air, not in the circus, and not on a wire. Look, just because the circus has been here is no That's reason. Right. I think I ought to be fair and say just because the circus yes. has been here, don't think we're really pulling well, tricks. I forgot. No. Yes. But the essence of your performing, as I understand it, is that it's off the ground. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. That's right. Three of you have fine tans, and, the, and three do not. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought I'd mention it for the folks at home. <laughs> <laughs> do you perform in equipment of some sort? Yes. Is it flying equipment? Off the ground flying equipment. Yes. <laughs> Have you anything to do with aircraft? Yes. From your appearance, it would seem that three are outside the aircraft and three are inside. <laughs> 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 it's a very old aircraft, Tony. Yeah. Two, have, two hold the wings up, you know, and the other one keeps the tail down. Uh, let me take a wild guess. You're not one of those teams of parachutists and free fallers, are you? We sure hope not. No, <laughs> we hope not. Four down and six to go, Miss Francis. However, when you're doing this flying, you're, do you all do it together? Yes, ma'am. In... Uh, uh, do you all stay in the plane while you're in action? Yes. You do. Uh, did you say they were self-employed, John? No. Oh. Uh, they're salaried. Well, do you work for a non-profit organization like the government? <laughs> How is that in? Yeah, that's very good. Yes? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Uh, are you in the Air Force? Well, right? <laughs> uh, Arlene, we I'll have, have to pass. Do you have anything w w before, before I pass? Well, actually, Were Arlene, you the planes that had anything to do with trying to recover the Gemini? No. no. May I, I'd like to take a whack at it. Yeah. Go ahead, Tony, if you want to go first. No, go ahead. Uh, you gentlemen said you're from Aquan. Uh, there are a lot of rubber companies there. I'm, I'm from Aquan. You're from Aquan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, did you have anything to do with the dirigible? No. <laughs> uh, what that's six down and four to go. Team, those flying teams uh, demonstrate. I think that's actually Arlene got it. You, we're just trying to find the name, which is a familiar one to all of us. The Thunderbirds. The Thunderbirds. United States Air Force. <laughs> Precision flying team. <laughs> and we're lucky enough uh, to have them here today because the Thunderbirds next Saturday is Armed Forces Day, and they're going to be down at. Uh, at Fort McGuire, uh, McGuire Air Force Base, not Fort McGuire, to give uh, another example of this remarkable precision flying, this tremendous skill. And uh, Lieutenant Colonel Ralph Maglioni is the leader. Colonel, could I ask you to introduce yes. your colleagues, please? Uh, flying on my left wing is Lieutenant Chris Paterakis from Modesto, California. Right wingman is Captain Buster McGee from La Jolla, California. The slot man, Captain Hank Canterbury from, Pen uh, from uh, Huntsville, Alabama. And flying the solo position is Captain Bobby Morgan from Pendleton, South Carolina. And from Walla Walla, Washington, the other solo position, Captain Bob Beckel.
Seven. Nice going. I must say, these are one thing we all ought to understand. They're all fighter pilots assigned because of their remarkable skill as precision flyers to the Thunderbird group now, and they travel all over the country and all over the world uh, demonstrating the remarkable skills of our Air Force, and you do us all proud and do us much honor. See if we can get down to McGuire and get a look at you all next Saturday, and good luck, and uh, if you uh, ever get tired of flying, I think we've got a great career of television. For the whole bunch of, you know, journal. John, if I might, I would just like to say for those of you in New York that we're really happy to be here because the Air Force Association in New York and the, the Iron Gate Squadron here has done more uh, for Air Force aid and Air Force education than all other units put together in the United States. So we're happy to be here. Ah, good. The Iron Gate Squadron, no well. From 21. another contestant for you in just a moment after this word. And now to meet our second contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Adeline Whoa. Southwick. Right. Miss or Mrs.? Mrs. Mrs. Southwick, and where are you from? Salem, New Hampshire. Salem, New Hampshire. Put it there. I'm... Bennett gets started. I'm a Tilton school oh, boy. Oh, dear. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get Bennett up there one of these days and see if we can get him through. You know, oh, get him a diploma. Right. We'll never make it. <laughs> nice to have you with us. And uh, may I present uh, our panel? Hi. Southwick, and you join me over here, ma'am. We'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. Panel, we can tell you that Mrs. Southwick is salaried and deals in a product. Uh, we'll admit there's a degree of service, but the product is primary here. And we'll begin with uh, Tony Rand. Mrs. Southwick, I generally look the contestant over from head to foot, hoping for clues. <laughs> but in your case, I did it just for the enjoyment of it. <laughs> I hope you didn't find any clues. <laughs> no, I didn't. Because I didn't get a good look at your hands. <laughs> My eye was somehow distracted. Uh, is you your get on with the game. Yes, hi. <laughs> is your product a useful one? There are those who would think that under certain circumstances it's quite useful, yes. Is it a product that's found in the home? Sometimes. When it is found in the home, is it found more in one part of the house than another? No. No, not necessarily. One down to nine to go, Miss Francis. Is your product uh, now, or has it ever been alive? No. Nope. Two down of eight Mrs. to go. Mrs. Southwick thought it was alive there for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Mason? Uh, is it something that everybody can use? Definitely. Is it a, a product that is much promoted? Yes, I'd say yeah. it's quite promoted. Mm -hmm. uh, is it something that people really need or just think they need? Well, I mean, is it a necessity? Well, is it a thing that just advertised the point that everybody thinks they must have it? No, I, we'll assume the question here is based on necessity and that it is not a, a necessary product to have. Yes, now, mind, 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 let me remind you again, I said there's a product here, but there's also a service so that the emphasis, you know, should be spread a bit. They can do it for you, in fact. Mr. Sir. Mr. Southwick, do you work for a profit-making organization? No. No? Four down and six to go, Mr. Randall. Do you work for some branch of the government? An arm, an element of government. Mm -hmm. Well, yes. Is it, a, is it a, the national government rather than a local government? No. Five down and five to go, Miss Francis. Do you move around in your job at all, Miss Southwick? Yes. Uh, do you, in order to perform this service, 
have to have something with you to perform it? There Rather than your being all by yourself? To perform it efficiently, there would have to be a transmission by Mrs. Southwick to the individual interested of a, what in this case we've called a product. Uh -huh. Is there anything instructive about what you do, Miss Southwick? No. No. Six down and four to go, Mrs. Mason. Is it something you like to tell people about? Yes. Is it something that is socially entertaining when you mention it? It could be, but uh, I don't... I, it, not really. As with many things, it would be a pleasant subject of discussion, but it's not necessarily socially entertaining. I'm going to give you one more minute, Mr. Mr. Sir. Mr. Southwick, the state of New Hampshire is the one state in the Union that has a state lottery. Have you got anything whatever to do with that state lottery? Yes. Have you now? Do you sell tickets for the state lottery? Yes! Very good, sir. Actually, uh, Mrs. Southwick is formally employed by the New Hampshire Sweepstakes Commission, which um, does run the, the uh, sweepstakes, all of the money going to uh, education in the state yes. of New Hampshire. And how, many, how much money have you raised in the two years you've been? In the two years that we've been for the state, mm -hmm. or um, Something two over and a half, and three, be about $5 million. Yeah, a little over $5 million has gone out of this activity right. to help state education. And needless to say, in a state which has a lot of small communities, it's made a, a big it's difference. Hard to get one of those started. Well, the way to get it started is the way New Hampshire did. They went down and got a gentleman named Ed Powers, who was in, trained by the FBI, and he was not going to let anybody get in here and get sticky. And uh, he has kept it absolutely tooth clean. He's a fine man, and he's got a very fine organization. They've got a good, strong governor, and Governor King. Yeah. And New Hampshire is a great state because therein resides, <laughs> at some time in his life, John Daly. <laughs> Mrs. Southwick, thank you very much. Well, great fun having you with us. We'll night, meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, this message. And now the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery challenger for which the panel is blindfolded. Panels, blindfolds all in place? Yes, sir. yes. Good, will you enter mystery challenger and sign in, please? As you know, panel, one question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise in this case. And we'll begin with Mrs. Mason. Well, are you a man or a woman? <laughs> that can't be added, <laughs> yes or no. Huh? Oh, I see. Well, are you a man? No. One down and nine to go, well, Mr. Sir. Anyway. <laughs> uh, have you anything whatever to do with the entertainment industry? I think so. Mr. Randall. Your voice is so full that I might wonder, are you a singer? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think so, yes. Miss Francis? Do you perform in the theater? Sometimes. Mrs. Mason? Are you working at the moment? Yes, I am. Mr. Sir? Are you playing in a New York theater at this time? Si, senor. Miss, senor. Yes. Mr. Randall? Hmm. In a singing role? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Francis? Well, the, the, is, is, the, uh, is the performance a musical comedy? Yes. Mrs. Mason? Is the show a smash? <laughs> I yes. hope so. <laughs> I'll answer that. Yes, indeed. Mr. Sir? Has it opened within the last two or three months? Si, senor. Mr. Randall? Must be a voice I know like my own. I know it's not Barbara Harris. <laughs> That's good. We're glad you're sure. <laughs> that was my question. Oh, is that you want to make that question? <laughs> uh, we shouldn't tease you. Do you want to make that your question, Tony? You're not Barbara Harris, are you? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so, <laughs> Miss Francis. Is part of the title of the play that you are in something that should begin at home? Sweet Charity. <laughs> yes. Uh, when Bird? When Bird? Yes. 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 yes.
A smash hit, I think we can all agree. A big smash hit by a young lady who's sort of used to that. You've got a Tony Award in Can uh, Can. You've got a Tony Award in Dan Yankees. Yankees. Red She'll hand. do it again, red too. Red <laughs> Don't we <laughs> hope you'll no do it again, more. too. Yeah. Some you. of the greatest dance numbers in your show I think I've ever seen. I think it's quite extraordinary Wonderful. myself. <laughs> What's the name of that fellow who does the dances? Oh, you mean Bob Fosse? He's some relative of yours, isn't he? Yes. Don't yes. you'd like to get that in? <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Fosse is here with us tonight. And thank you very much, ma'am, for thank coming to see much. us on your Sunday night. Thank you. It's good of you. tonight panel and uh, we'll have another contestant after this word and now a final challenger will you enter and sign in please Helga Kohlberg right ma'am Uh, Miss or Mrs. Colbert? Mrs. Mrs. Colbert, Mrs. and where are you from? Oshlo, Norway. Oshlo, Norway. Yes. Oh, nice to have you here. Mrs. Colbert, may I present the panel? How do you now, do? Now, would you uh, join me here, please, ma'am, and we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. Well, this is kind of fun. We'll tell you that it's a little bit of a surprise for you. We'll see how quickly you can do things. We'll tell you that Mrs. Kohlberg is salaried and deals in a service. And let's begin with Bennett Cerf. Mrs. Kohlberg, do you perform this service for a profit-making organization? Yes. Do you do it in the United States? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Randall. You do it in Norway? No. Two down and uh, eight to go, Miss Francis. Well, whatever you do, is it, is it uh, do men and women enjoy your services? Uh, I didn't catch that. Yes, do men and women enjoy your services? They yes. use the service. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, do you, uh, in any sense, perform? No. Mm, no. Three down and seven to go, Mrs. Mason. Uh, is it something that um, you uh, uh, have to do alone? Yes. Is it something you had to be trained to do? Um, you have to have a degree of training for it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, is that a training that you took in uh, Norway? Yes. Uh, do you have to touch your uh, customers? Mm. No. Four down and six to go, Mr. Sir. Mrs. Kohlberg, does your service have anything to do with either tourism or transportation? Mm -hmm. transportation. Yes. Mm -hmm. Would it be transportation? Mm -hmm. Yes. Is it transportation on either the land or sea? Yes. Would it be the sea? Yes. Have you got something to do with one of the Norwegian ships that ply between New York and Oslo? Yes. Could be. That's very good, Bennett. I'm going to throw all the cards over because we're running out of time. Actually, Mrs. Kohlberg is a radio officer in the Merchant Navy of Norway. <laughs> Sometimes, sometimes goes to on the same ship with her husband, who is a chief engineer, but not always. Sometimes she's on one ship and her good husband is on another. And that's fun. She likes cargo vessels better than passenger ships. Thank you very much, Mrs. Kohlberg. Nice to have you with us. Let me just... Uh, say quickly, or to remind some of you, next week, because of a special program, we'll be preempted and we won't be here, but we'll be back in two weeks. May I say how nice it's been to have you here, Mrs. Mason, and always, of course, you too, Tony, and good night, Mr. Randy. Good night, John. Good night, Arlene. Good night, Tony, dear. Good night, Pamela. Good night. Love sitting next to you, Mrs. Mason. You too, John. Good night. Yeah, I don't know. I suppose it's just he's been through Easter and the circus has been in town. And he is something of a circus all by himself, I always say. And thanks to all of you for being with us on What's My Line. What's My Line is a 
CBS Television Network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Connor. This is Johnny Olson speaking. Tonight's program is pre-recorded.